Well, Alex, uh, the governor's plans for education are, are I think, largely going to mirror um, some of the statements that I wrote in uh, the Ed NC column. Uh, you know, I think our big three, and these are not force ranked, are uh, number one, we need more job ready degrees faster uh, and at less cost. And connected to that, I think it's competency based learning. Uh, we want to measure what um, students, and by students, I mean anywhere from four to 40 to older than that, uh, what they can do and, uh, and what they know. Um, and we believe that we can do that in a more um, formative way and less in a, you know, to move away from the sort of 20th century model of bubble sheets and dead on arrival metrics. Uh, we want for our uh, test to measure what matters most and to, to be able to be a good assessment, and, and James will certainly uh, know this, is a constant measurement of where you are and it needs to be um, ongoing so that you can benefit and help the teacher to teach, use that information so the teacher can teach and the student can learn. Uh, right now, our current you know, end of grade, end of course, NC final exams um, are ending uh, with, they, they can be helpful to policymakers to make some decisions, but I don't think it's helpful to educators. Um, it very, and I, and I, I think we can you know, have fewer, deeper, better tests. So that's, that's very important to the governor. So that's the competency-based piece. Uh, the second piece is um, you know, we want uh, readers, teachers, and leaders. Um, and uh, you know, we, we think that the Read to Achieve legislation, uh, and I'm starting to hear more positive feedback. I think we still have uh, some things that, that we need to focus on and improve. But um, I, I think there's very little debate, uh, at least there shouldn't be on the fact that from uh, the time uh, before a child is born up until the time they're eight years old, we need to be laser focused on that early learning piece. We need to be laser focused on literacy um, because we all know what an essential skill that is to, to in life. Um, and we all know about the harrowing statistics uh, when, that, uh, when that doesn't happen. Um, and right now 65% of our kids, according to NAEP scores uh, in North Carolina, uh, and this is above the national average by the way, are, um, are, are not uh, proficient readers. Um, and that's uh, collectively our hair ought to be on fire as a state. Uh, the second piece around teachers and principals, uh, we uh, want to uh, reward teachers and principals for their uh, results driven leadership. So this is about performance. It's about, um, it's about their uh, market value. And I don't mean to be markety, but um, it is about, uh, you know, some some subjects uh, are harder to staff than others. Uh, some schools are, um, are higher need than others. And we ought to be rewarding teachers for that. And we ought to be rewarding teachers for their ability to um, not just hit a, hit a test score, but their ability to, um, to lead their peers and, 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 and to really um, demonstrate best practice. And we believe a lot of the professional development needs to be embedded within the school. And finally, on the uh, readers, teachers, and leaders piece, the leadership piece, not only from the teacher, but from the, the principal. Uh, there's 2,500 principals in our state. Um, and I believe one of the best uh, investments that we can make is in principal leadership. Uh, if we have stunning talent in all 2,500 of our schools, leading our schools, um, that is a game changer. It's also a pretty efficient way to go about things. Um, there's 110,000 teachers, so it's not to say you and the focus has correctly been on our teachers, but I think we really need to focus on students' results and also um, and principals as, as part of the full package.